Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today is a video taking a look at a frame and specifically this. Now this is the, let me just check, Titan XL5 HD version from iFlight. Now I've bought this with my own money, I've ordered it in as part of my new Avatar HD build and rather than just throw it together I thought I would actually do a quick video to show you what the frame is actually like I'll show you what you get in with it as well and then at the end I'll put it together and then I will share with you my thoughts and just really say if I think you should consider getting this frame or not. Now as I've said this is what they class as a digital frame which means it'll take a DJI Steel Idol Ear unit so we shouldn't have too many problems getting the Avatar VTX in although it's a stupid size with regards to mounting so we'll have to see how that goes. Anyway first of all hopping inside the box and just showing you what you get inside I haven't seen in here myself yet. On the top we get some stickers which is very nice of iFlight they always give us them. Looking at it we have two battery straps again very nice they're not the rubberized one but that is sort of a leathery sort of fake leather effect which should offer grip. I do prefer the ones that have like that rubberized effect on them but it's nice to have some straps in there as well. And then we've got all of the accessories and the frame parts. So looking at it they have included some 3D printed parts so this is an antenna mount for the back. Doesn't look like GPS as well just antenna that one there. We've got another mount here. GPS mount that one looks like so again to go on the back of the frame probably we'll take a look we've then got a couple of other carbon bits we've then got our motor and arm protectors there's the printed parts for the DJI ear unit there you can see them so we've got the ear unit fixtures there looks to be a couple of other parts in there too we'll take a closer look at them and some antenna mount parts as well some rubber pads always nice to see these for our batteries again will offer some grip oh they've included wire protectors I really like these these are those things that you put your wires through and it just helps protect them in the event of a crash and then looking at it we have all of the bits for the frame and an assembly guide as well so just opening that up taking a look at the assembly guide that looks fairly straightforward. They're showing you what you've got, what each item is, what the standoff is. Looks quite a complicated assembly from this point when you look at it like that. However, as always with these things, a diagram can tend to make it look harder than it actually is. So we'll see what that's like. And then we've obviously got the screws for the frame and the frame parts in separate bags. Now, if we just get the carbon out and just have a look at this and show you guys this, first before we do the assembly and I'm going to grab my vernier caliper because we're going to want to make sure we know how deep the arms are or how thick I should say the arms are on this. Okay so we've got an X plate which has nuts pressed into that already so just showing you that there's one two three four five six seven eight nuts pressed into that part so they're sort of captive already in place. We've then got our bottom frame part here. If we just look at what the thickness of that is, arms is most important, but that is 2.93 mil carbon on the base plate, which is nice and good, nice and solid. Cutting looks really, really good on that, to be fair. Absolutely fantastic, so that looks fine. We've then got the top frame part, Feels a little thinner actually, I'd say that's probably 2 mil. Yeah, that is 2 mil carbon fibre on the top frame. The iFlight logo on the front. Again, all of the cutting looks very clean, very tidy. Nothing off the edge at all, so it all looks good. And then obviously we've got our four arms. And these are absolutely solid. That was 5.76, so yeah, 5.78, so 5. So I know you're seeing this upside down, but 5.8 mil on the arms, which are super thick. You're not really going to break one of them very easily. That's for sure. The more chance of damage you're going to get is from around this area here or the frame itself. So they're nice and 
absolutely solid too. So that all looks fine. And then if we just take a look at what the metal work looks like, let's get that out. Everything looks like it's bagged individually, which is really nice. I do like it when the companies do that, makes life a little bit easier. Oh, and the screw bags are all labeled too. So 12 pieces of M3.8. We've got M2.8, four pieces, M3.12s, which is good, M3.14s, M2.5s and M3.10s. And then we've got in here the actual metalwork, so our standoffs and everything like that. These standoffs are not nutted, so there's no nut on the top and the bottom. You see on some of the Speedy B frames, they have the standoff, which means you can put a wrench on it and hold it. I quite like that. However, these are your more traditional, just gnarled stud that goes into the frame. Overall, so far, everything looks good. So the next job for me to do is actually get this thing together. Okay, just to show you something quickly on this. Now, I've got it to this stage here. I think it's right because the instructions are quite difficult to follow. However, we have M12s in these outer four here. It's easy to think the M14s go here, but I don't think they do. I believe they go here and here. So the M12s go on the outside, and then you've got these massive M30s that come in the packet that go in the middle, and then you can see that they're there. So next, it's just carry on and work our way through. Okay, so I've got the frame mostly together. Now I've just popped two screws in just to hold the top plate on. I've mounted all of this 3D printed stuff on the back and all of the bits all the way around. Now, just taking a closer look, overall I have to say there is a lot to like here, but there are some things I do wish were done a little bit differently. I like these 3D printed motor protection mounts. They're all really good. The antenna mount seems okay. It's not gonna be ideal for me, however, I do think I'm going to be able to utilize it by putting some uh, antennas out the side there. We've got this rather elaborate GPS bracket on the back that's fully adjustable. You can tilt it, move it. Whilst it's good to get the GPS out the back, I just feel it's a little bit overcomplicated, if I'm honest. If I flip it over, you can see there, you can adjust it and move it via the screws. Nice, but I'm just not sure it warranted quite that much complication. There's four screws in there, another two screws underneath to hold it in place. A simple 3D printed piece probably would have been okay. On the front where the camera goes, you've then got these little inserts that go in. You can see them there on the sides, down there. They offer some vibration isolation for the camera. Just be careful, they will pop out. So if you do give them a push, they will actually come out of the frame, but it's nice to see them as well. Now, clearances wise, there's plenty of space in the back here. I haven't put these bits in for the DJI FPV ear unit that they include. They can be put in there to hold it in place. I haven't bothered because I'm not going to be using that, but they do include them with it as well if you want to. As for stack height on this frame, I've had a look at that point there. We've got 20 mil. Basically, there's yeah, 19... Yeah, 20 mil on the frame there. However, the screws don't go up to 20. 
you're going to be topping off at about 17 mil max. So you do need to watch that with regards to your stack height. You're gonna to struggle to be able to put a flight stack and a VTX on the top simply because of the way the frame is that it's got this larger part on the inside rather than on the outside like on some other frames. However, there is plenty of space here. You do have that mounting there for 20 by 20 if you want it. You've got another 20 by 20 and 30 by 30 down there as well if you did want to do it that way. Overall, it looks a decent frame. About my only major complaint on it is I do wish this top plate was wider. I think it's very narrow. I'm not really sure why it needed to be so narrow. It would have been nice to have had something just with a bit more protection of the flight stack, a little bit more width. I will probably do what I've done on some of my other frames. I think the Mamba includes it. You get like this little protection piece that comes around here. I really like that on the diatone frames. I think it's just a good idea. It just offers a little bit of extra protection. If you do shove it into a bush, I'll probably print something for that. I'm probably not gonna use that GPS mount. Well, what I do know is my GPS is not gonna fit it because I've got the Maytech SMAQ. That's not gonna fit in there. So if I do wanna use that, I'm gonna to have to 3D print my own one, um, but I'll take a look at that later. Okay, so the build is now done. And as I said at the start, this one is an Avatar HD build and you can see that up the back. Now for this one, I use the SpeedyB Stack version three. Just something to be aware of on this is that it is a tight fit. This new stack does have quite a lot of height in it simply because of the fact it's got connections all the way around and there needs to be a decent gap between the ESC and the flight board itself so nothing actually catches but that did mean it was very very close with regards to the nuts of the top of the frame so it is something to be aware of on this this is the full camera version this is the 19 mil not the 14 so the cable was easily long enough to go to the back for the vtx and what i've ended up actually doing with that walk snail vtx is rather than create a custom 25.5 bracket i created a cradle that fits the existing bracketry designed for dji so as this came with this dji ear unit style bracket i've created this cradle which i'll put up on thingiverse the vtx just drops into that and then that's all held in place at the back nice you then just see the wire over the top. I'm going to clip a couple of these down a little bit tidier once it's completely done. There's a couple of little things I need to do on it before it's ready for flight. You can then see at the back we have our GPS. This bracket didn't fit the one I had but what I've actually done is chopped it a little bit, put it in and then heat shrunk it all in place and it's got a little bit of an adhesive sticker on there holding that too. You can then see we've got the two walk snail antennas coming out the back here. That's because there was a hole on either side of this back bracket and they were able to go through without a problem. The UFLs were a little bit tight but as long as you're careful you can get them through. And then underneath I've actually squeezed in a Vifly finder under there because I like having these on all of my quads as well and then if you look up front you can see I've got my express LRS antenna going through to the front try to keep it out the way of the VTX area and then that's buried down in there now this wasn't ever designed to be the tidiest build in the world you can see that there's just a couple of the cables don't particularly want to stay tight it was more than anything just a build I wanted to get together so I did have a custom aircraft for the Avatar HD and that is all now in place overall I think it's a nice frame I do think it is a bit overcomplicated in areas and as I've said I do wish this top plate was wider you can now see especially with this flight controller that it is sticking out either side just a bit of extra protection here would have been nice something else i found a little bit frustrating is that there are no 3d prints that i can see for this frame listed on the iFlight website for things like GoPro mounts. I have found one that should fit on Thingiverse and that is actually printing right now as we speak. But it is a bit frustrating that you don't get the level of prints available for this that you see from other manufacturers. If I'm wrong, please do let me know in the chat section if I've missed it. But I do like it when manufacturers do supply you STL files to be able to customize your aircraft. It did come with some of these extras, including you know the rubber mounts here 
for the camera as well as on the bottom of the motor mount too. However, it would be nice to have a set of STL files available to download on their website. Anyway, that's it. It's all done. Next job for me is to actually get it in the air and I'll be doing that over the next couple of days. If you found this video interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support us to keep making content like this, showing you things like this, please do check out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It's only by you guys using them am I able to keep making content like this and be able to give you my thoughts on things as well. Anyway, that's it. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.